Hello and welcome to my guide on enzymes for AQAA level. First of all, what is an enzyme? Enzymes are biological catalysts. This means they work inside cells and living organisms. Like a chemical catalyst, they increase the rate of chemical reactions. They do this by providing an alternative reaction pathway, which has a lower activation energy. As with any catalyst, the enzyme can be recovered intact at the end of the chemical reaction and isn't consumed. Enzymes are proteins. This means they're made out of a sequence of amino acids joined together with peptide bonds. All enzymes have a specific tertiary structure. The key part of this structure is the active site. The active site has a complementary shape, meaning its shape and charges match to the substrate. This property of enzymes makes them highly specific, so for a single substrate, you will only have a single enzyme which catalyzes its reaction. There are two models of enzyme action, the lock and key model and the induced fit model. In the lock and key model, the enzyme molecule is passive and acts as a lock. The substrate binds to the active site of the enzyme and then the reaction is catalyzed. This model is a little simplistic and doesn't really explain fully how an enzyme works. The induced fit model is probably better for explaining enzyme action. In the induced fit model, the active site isn't completely rigid and is allowed to flex slightly. This allows the interaction of charges and a complementary shape to catalyse the reaction as the substrate binds. One factor which affects the rate of enzyme controlled reactions is temperature. When the temperature is very low, this means that particles don't have much kinetic energy and are moving slowly. This will result in a lower rate of reaction as enzyme molecules need to collide with substrate molecules in order for the reaction to happen. At the optimum temperature, the reaction is at its fastest possible rate. There's enough kinetic energy for the substrate to hit the enzyme and the reaction to happen, but there isn't too much kinetic energy. As you go above the optimum temperature, the rate starts to decrease very rapidly. This is because the increased temperature causes enzyme molecules to be denatured. When this happens, the tertiary structure is permanently altered and it disrupts the active site so that the substrate is no longer complementary to it. A second factor which affects the rate of enzyme controlled reactions is the pH of the environment. At the optimum pH, there's the fastest rate of reaction. This is because the charges in the active site are completely complementary to the charges found on a substrate molecule. Below this pH, in acidic environments, the amino acids will start to accept protons onto the amino groups in their structure. This disrupts the charges, causing the active site to become more positive and no longer complementary to the substrate. At pHs above the optimum pH, amino acids are going to lose protons from the carboxylic acid group. This will result in more negative charges, and again it means that the active site charges are not complementary to the charges on a substrate molecule, slowing the reaction. Both extreme pHs, so very acidic and very alkali conditions, will cause the enzyme to be denatured, permanently losing and disrupting the structure of the active sites. One final factor that affects the rate of enzyme controlled reactions is the concentration of enzyme. Generally, as you increase the concentration of the substrate, it increases the rate of reaction. This comes down to collision theory. If you have more molecules of substrate floating around, there's going to be more collisions between an active site and a substrate molecule per second. This only works up to a certain point. When there is too much substrate, the active sites become saturated and they're all filled by a substrate molecule. At this point, the rate of reaction doesn't increase any further because all the active sites are full, so there's nothing to catalyse a reaction any faster. The presence of a competitive inhibitor will reduce the rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. 
competitive inhibitors all have a similar shape to the substrate molecule for that enzyme. This means that they're partly complementary to the active sites and will bind to the active site area blocking the entry of the substrate molecule. This reduces the rate of reaction as there's less active sites available and they cannot be used until the competitive inhibitor has diffused away again. If you increase the concentration of substrates you can reduce the impact of a competitive inhibitor. One application of this is in treating poisoning by drinking antifreeze. You have an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase produced by the liver. If you drink antifreeze, that enzyme is inactivated by a competitive inhibitor. The hospital treatment for that is intravenous alcohol. The alcohol is the correct substrate for alcohol dehydrogenase and increasing the concentration of alcohol in the blood is going to reduce the impact of the antifreeze and mean that the patient suffers less damage as a result. Non-competitive inhibitors can also reduce the rate of an enzyme-controlled reaction. In this case, the inhibition is permanent rather than temporary, as was the case with competitive inhibitors. Non-competitive inhibitor molecules usually don't look anything like the substrate molecule. In fact, they don't bind to the active site at all, but they bind somewhere else on the enzyme molecule. By doing this, it disrupts the overall tertiary structure of the enzyme. This changes the shape of the active site, and it means that the active site is no longer complementary to the substrate molecule. An important example of this is lots of poisons and toxins that can be taken into the body, one of which is cyanide, which inhibits the cytochrome oxidase enzyme used in aerobic respiration. Thanks for watching the video, and if you don't quite get it or you need a reminder, please feel free to watch through the video again.